Hey everyone, welcome back to the letterpress department here at Jukebox. And today we're doing something totally different than we usually do. We're going to be producing a portrait using a CMYK process. So that's a four color print process using cyan, yellow, magenta, and black ink to make a full color photograph. And this is something we haven't really done before. So it's a bit of an experiment and we don't exactly know what kind of results we'll be getting. So I'm really excited and we can't wait to get these plates on the press and printing. So stick around and enjoy the show. We'll be using these four copper halftone plates to print our image today. These printing plates are made using a photographic acid etching process that creates a relief image from a halftone film negative. There is one plate for each color that we'll be using. Cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. Each plate has been etched with a line screen value of 100 lines per inch. Lines per inch is a measurement of how close each dot is within a halftone grid. A higher LPI number will output a higher level of detail and sharpness. You can see the individual dots for each plate under the macro lens here. The goal of this video is to show you how four color printing can combine to create a full spectrum of color, whether it's using letterpress, offset, or digital print. Printing in this style hasn't really been done since the 1950s, before offset lithography took over, but we were curious to try it out for ourselves. Let's get started. The first color we'll be laying down is cyan. I'll need to position the copper plate for this color precisely on the aluminum base to bring it up to type high. I'm using a calipered double-sided adhesive to stick it in place. Next, we'll get our ink train ready by positioning our rubber rollers and steel rider rollers that move the ink from the ink well to the main cylinder and to the form rollers. The keys on the well are adjusted for the correct amount of ink. I'm going to start off with a small amount of ink coverage and adjust as needed. It's important to warm up the ink and get it moving so that it spreads evenly across all the rolls. The amount of ink we need on press is a bit of a balancing act and I judge how much to start with based on how the ink sounds as it runs through the rollers. Once the ink is warmed up, I'm ready to lock in the chase and lay down my spot sheet. It's also important to adjust the level of pressure to the correct amount for our first impression. 
I'll lower the form rollers and let the ink move onto the plate and then onto the sheet. The spot sheet is just a standard piece of 60 pound text weight paper. This spot sheet will help give me a point of reference for my sheet size and the positioning of the bottom brass guides. Now to set up the feed board and delivery area on the press. I'm using a 16 point coated paper stock, which is very different than the cotton paper that is most popular with letterpress printing. Coated paper stocks are ideal for halftone printing as they reproduce the small printed dots with a much crisper dot gain than the uncoated papers. I'm still expecting a large amount of dot gain or ink spreading than on an offset press, but it shouldn't be too noticeable. Okay, so our first hit of cyan is showing me that we're going to need to adjust the make ready to even out some of the areas that aren't inking properly, and also check for straightness. The first printed color needs to be perfect, as it's going to dictate the positioning for the remaining three plates. With a little extra packing on our spot sheet, we can start to see the image becoming more full and complete. This is exactly what we're hoping for. Let's take a closer look at how the halftone dots are reproducing. One challenge of balancing the ink level is making sure that the dots on the plate do not fill with ink. And another challenge is holding a consistent level of ink to make sure each print holds the correct tone and density of cyan throughout the run.
Now that the ink is looking even, we're ready to print our first pass. For the sake of comparison, I'm going to print a set of cotton sheets without changing anything else. Just to show you how different an uncoated paper stock works with this ink. I'll do a quick cleanup and move on to the next color. This press has a very convenient wiper blade that acts like a squeegee against the main cylinder to wipe most of the ink from the rollers. Now on to our yellow plate. Once again, being sure to position the artwork in as close to the same spot as the previous plate. It's very important for registration to be as tight as possible with halftone printing because any small amount of misalignment will cause the image to appear blurry. The combination of only yellow ink and cyan ink creates a pretty strange image, and once again it's challenging to know the exact density of ink I'm looking for. With a bit of ink on press, I'm ready to take the first proof and see how it lands. The brass paper guides are looking good, but the side guide will need some adjustment to register.
The combination of only yellow ink and cyan ink creates a pretty strange image, and once again it's challenging to know the exact density of ink I'm looking for. I don't want too much or too little. Modern offset presses will run all four colors in a single pass, so if any color needs adjustment, it can be done on the fly. Offset presses also make use of a digital densitometer to measure and control the optical density of color or saturation of the ink. With the yellow ink laid down, I'm ready to set up the next color, magenta. This is the color that will really bring this print to life. The combination of cyan, yellow, and magenta are technically all you need to create a full color image, and black is added as a key line pass to add contrast. And that's why it's called K in CMYK. Even with the registration wildly out of place, you can begin to see how the colors have started to come together. I'll make the necessary adjustments and take another look. Adding magenta to the print changes everything. We begin to see a much greater spectrum of color, tones, shadows, and highlights in the artwork.
Now to set up for the final color. There's a very small amount of black in the overall artwork, and since black ink is so dense and powerful, I'm going to be very careful with the amount of ink I'm using. This last pass should bring out a pop of contrast to the art. With all four passes lined up, you can see the progression as each layer brings out more and more color to the overall image. I'm going to let these run through, keep an eye on the ink level, and make sure the registration is keeping everything crisp. Before we take a closer look at the final image, I'm going to get these prints trimmed down to final size on the guillotine. Here's a view of each plate individually printed in their respective colors to give you a breakdown before they layer over each other. 
What's really happening is a full-on optical illusion. CMYK printing applies the science of subtractive color mixing and reflected light to simulate a full spectrum. The halftones also trick the mind into seeing tonal depth and value across the printed sheet. If we get as close as possible, you begin to see how each dot of color blends together to achieve this effect. All right, everyone, thanks again for joining us during this making of a CMYK four color process print. I'm really happy with the way things turned out, so a huge thank you to Dmitry Serov, the fashion photographer that provided us with his portrait. We'll put a link in the description below to more of Dmitry's work. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel as we have a lot more video content on the way. Also, we did gloss over a fair bit of the graphic arts science behind CMYK printing, so if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below, as I always make sure to answer everyone as best I can. Until then, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.